Sniper EFI does a great job of adapting to most engine combos, but no two engines are the same. So taking the extra time to tune your engine's idle circuit can be well worth the effort. Not only can it help prevent those embarrassing engine stalls, but when done correctly, you'll get easier starts, better idle quality, and improved throttle response. All right, I know what you're thinking. Reading the instructions, it's a waste of time, right? Well, that's why I'm here. I'll show you some idle tuning basics and walk you through step-by-step step on how you can get the most out of your sniper system. But before we do, there's a few things that we need to check first. With the key in the run position, navigate to the tuning, basic, then basic idle icons, and ensure that your target idle speed is set to the desired RPM that you entered in the wizard. If the value's not correct, you can reset it here. If you're using Sniper EFI system to control ignition timing, navigate to tuning, advanced, advanced idle, then idle spark, and set the idle spark to disabled. You'll have to turn the ignition off, then back on to save your changes. You can re-enable timing control once the idle adjustment process is completed. Trying to tune the idle while the ECU is simultaneously trying to bring your idle under control by adjusting the timing is counterproductive. It's also a good idea to visually as well as manually check the secondary linkage to make sure that it's closed. Although the secondary blades are not adjustable in the base sniper units, the Quadrajet and 4500 models are adjustable. It's a good idea to visually check them before starting the vehicle just to make sure that they're operating smoothly. If you have a Quadrajet or a 4500 series sniper, you can adjust the secondaries per the instructions that are included in the kit. Check your TPS reading on the handheld. It should be zero. If not, turn the key off, then back on to reboot it. The idle adjustment screw should be about one half to one full turn inward, clockwise, from initial contact. Once you've completed all the steps that we just talked about, you can go ahead and start the vehicle and allow it to run. We need the temperature to be above 160 degrees on the handheld. This is a critical step. Our first step is to adjust the amount of air allowed by the IAC. Using the handheld, navigate to the monitor, multi-gauge, then sensors tab. The IAC reading on the handheld should read between two and 8%. I usually shoot for the five to six range. Ideally, you want the IAC to be involved as little as possible. Also make sure that your temperature is still above 160 degrees. To adjust the IAC, we'll be turning the curb idle screw on the sniper unit. Turning the screw clockwise, will open the throttle blades. This increases the amount of air through the throttle body, triggering the IAC to close and decreasing the amount of air that's added by the IAC. Adjusting the screw counterclockwise closes the throttle blades, decreasing the air in the throttle body. This triggers the IAC to open, adding more air to compensate. Turning the curb idle screw can change our TPS reading. To reset the TPS back to zero, simply turn the ignition off for five seconds, then restart. the TPS reading should now be zero again. Anytime the TPS reading goes above 2% or more, the IAC automatically goes into the hold position, which is somewhere between 30 and 50% by default. With that much extra air, your idle speed is gonna be significantly higher than the target RPM that you set with the wizard, making tuning almost impossible. So always reset the TPS to zero after you make any adjustments to the curb idle screw. If your IAC reading fluctuates or is really erratic, it may be a signal that you have a vacuum leak. You'll need to double check all vacuum lines, caps, and fittings for leaks. One tip to help you pinpoint a vacuum leak is to use a can of carb cleaner. Spraying a light mist of carb cleaner over any lines and fittings. If the idle raises slightly when you do this, you found a leak. You'll need to correct the problem and perform the adjustment procedure again. Another possible problem area is the PCV valve, if your vehicle is equipped with one. If you have a PCV valve on your engine, it could be gummed up or sticky. Check it for normal operation. If not, replace it with a new unit and then recheck the idle reading when finished. In some cases, you may notice that the TPS reading doesn't go back to zero after you've gassed it or blipped the throttle a couple of times. This is due in part usually because of a mechanical failure on the linkage itself. Some possible causes are a sticky or binding throttle linkage and sometimes even radio frequency interference. Manipulating the throttle linkage can help reveal the culprit that's preventing your TPS from returning to zero. Correct the problem and be sure to add a secondary return spring as a safety precaution. If you suspect your issue is with radio frequency interference, the only way to verify it is with a data log. 
Now RF is pretty common in older vehicles, especially those that are still using the original ignition components. This is especially true if your vehicle has non-resistor spark plugs or solid core plug wires. Switching your engine to resistor type spark plugs with the correct gap, a set of spiral core wires with a small amount of dielectric grease on the boots, and a new distributor cap will help eliminate most potential RFI noise. With a little time and effort, your sniper system and engine can perform at its best. Also, don't forget to go back and re-enable the idle spark timing control feature if you disabled it earlier. I hope you gained some great advice today. To see more of our sniper how-to videos, visit our website at holly.com.